Hi, Moss here, and today I have the Apex Sunkaku. This is the latest amp from a guy called Pete Millett, whom if you've been around Head5 a very long time, you'll know who he is, but if you haven't, he is a very famous designer of headphone amps who designed a number of DIY designs, such as the uh, Millett Starving Student, a very inexpensive DIY amp, up to the $10,000 commercial Apex Pinnacle with top-of-the-line preamp and headphone amp. And he sells his amps through a guy called Todd Green, who is the owner of Todd the Vinyl Junkie. Now, I knew of him and I had read and many things about his amps, but I'd never actually heard one. So it was with great delight that he contacted me and said, I he's going to happen to be in Tokyo and it's going to be in time to coincide with the headphone festival. So he was going to bring along his amp and he wanted to plug it in somewhere and, and demonstrate it if possible. And the, the reason it's a special amp is, uh, apart from the fact that it's the first time I've heard one of his amps, is that it's all his amps are tube amps and... Uh, unlike a high-end tube amp that you normally see, which is something like the Studio 6 sitting here with tubes coming out everywhere and gigantic power supply and giving off a fair bit of heat, this is actually quite small. And it's small and special not because it uses any small tubes, but it because it uses the Korg New Tube. Now the Korg New Tube is a modern technology design of a single-ended triode. So unlike uh, you know, your regular tubes which are round, are vacuum sealed and, and um, put out a lot of heat and are fairly inefficient, the Korg New Tube is quite, inef quite efficient, not requiring much power at all. In fact, it can even power off batteries. You could very readily make a portable amp with it. Now this isn't portable, it's a full-sized amp. It's actually a hybrid amp with a Korg New Tube gain stage and a solid state output stage. And it's got balanced input and output, even if the actual circuit is not balanced. But, as you can see, it's much, much smaller than the Studio 6. It's about the size of two Apple Mac Minis stacked on top of each other. So, in, in terms of efficiency, it's really good. Now, uh, input and output wise, you have uh, balanced input and output as, as seen here. Let me spin it around so you can see the back. The, it has three inputs. Uh, balanced input, which is converted to single-end for the circuit, and has two single-ended outputs. It also has a single-ended preamp output, which I uh, plugged into my uh, uh, Atomatis 3 active speakers. Unfortunately, my only uh, disappointment is that it's not a balanced output because a proper balanced output can cancel noise and especially with all the computer gear I have around here, it'd be kind of, kind of good. Though it worked fine when I used it. Now, onto the front. Let me plug it in to give you a bit of a demonstration. When you power it on at the back, you have a... Uh, it goes into standby mode and from then when you switch it on, it warms up in, well, you know, about 10 seconds. Now, unlike my Studio 6, which takes about 30 seconds and, and really used to, ideally should be left on for about four hours before it starts to sound really good, this thing sounds good, you know, pretty much straight out of, uh, straight out of warm up. And that's probably the advantage of the Korg New Tube because it doesn't require a lot of power, it doesn't require a lot to get going. And, these, and my Studio 6 has big transformers too, which probably work best when they've, they've nicely warmed up. Now, uh, select, everything is selected from, from here, so you have your three inputs. Uh, you have outputs, uh, both you select uh, from unbalanced low, unbalanced high, balanced low gain, balanced high gain, and preamp mode. So you've got your five selections there, which you just click with a press, and from there your regular volume knob comes into action. Really that's all there is to it. And it works the same whether you use the unbalanced output or the balanced output. There's no gain benefit of having the balanced output here because the actual amp circuit is single-ended. So it's not like uh, a fully uh, differential, fully balanced design where the balanced output is the better option. It worked fine whichever one I used. Now, in terms of use, um, as I said, it warms up pretty quickly. And from there, it, if you're thinking, you know, you need your big amps for big dynamic sound, this delivers from, from a small package, it delivers a much bigger and a much... Uh, higher performance sound than such a small package would suggest. So you're really getting your $2,000 worth in terms of dynamics and detail retrieval and everything. But as typical of Pete Millett's designs, the sound has a bit of a sweetness to it, a bit of uh, that kind of tube warmth to it. The only problem with the sound is that uh, if you tap the chassis with headphones and you get this pinging sound, so the way he's mounted the tubes isn't quite so isn't quite so great in that regard. But as long as you don't touch the chassis, you're fine. And you might notice if you look behind that I've actually had it sitting on top of uh, the uh, the SoundAware server here with some uh, Herbie's uh, feet underneath, which you know inexpensive uh, damping material there. And uh, but so when I press the buttons, I hear a bit of a ping in my ears. But other than that, you know that that doesn't interfere in the sound once you start music going. You leave the thing alone. So that's probably, along with the preamp, my only disappointments in the design. But from there, uh, the performance was fantastic. I mean, immediately, immediate, great dynamics. 
uh, immediate great levels of detail. Uh, it's not going to, and this is going by memory, it's not going to say give you that gigantic, seemingly limitless space of, say, uh, Cavalli Audio's liquid tungsten, which I know I heard in an ideal setup, obviously, uh, with, with huge space. But it gives, if you have a small venue, the music from a small venue, you get a real, very clear image of that small venue. If you have an image uh, like uh, music in a large venue, like an orchestra, it comes very large. Now, the place where this uh, works best is with planar headphones. So I just had the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 V2s arrive. I plug this in and absolutely fantastic with these. Uh, planar headphones, I think it was where it works best because you do get the dynamics and they do, although they don't have the widest sound stage, you do have, it, it matches up absolutely perfectly. I plugged in H, HD800s. It's, your mileage may vary. It's not that the performance is bad, but some people like uh, Pete Millet's amps with the HD800s. Some people don't. Some people prefer something a bit warmer. I tend to prefer something a bit warmer. Uh, I didn't have the H, the, uh, a HD800S here, which probably would have been a better matchup with this, but it, the performance was fine. Maybe just down to personal preference. Some people like it, some people don't. And so there's, there's nothing wrong with the sound in that regard. But where I really liked it again was with planers, with the Mr. Speaker's Ether Flows and the HD1000s, and I have a few other headphones around here. And all of them, even down to uh, uh, dynamic driver IMs, were give, were driven with really excellent authority in a lot of detail. Now, regarding IEMs, even in low gain mode, there's still a fair bit of hiss, so they're not, it's not really an IEM amp. Definitely not a, uh, a good choice for that. But it would do it, you know, you could plug them in and you get really good sound, even if you had a lot of noise in the background. So, really, it's not, there's not really much to it. It's a fairly straightforward, high-end, hybrid amp, and if you're looking for something minimal and low power, this could be an option, and if you don't mind that, that slight tube pinging sound when you press the buttons and you don't need uh, need balanced outputs uh, for the preamp, yeah, I really have been really enjoying my time with this amp. Actually, I spent so much time with it, listening to it that I, I totally neglected the Studio 6 and you know only just gone back to it recently because I'd unplugged this for the to do the review. So, my first time uh, with Pete Millot's amps and it's an absolutely fantastic amp and I'm really glad I got a chance to listen to it. So if you have any questions, please do ask in the comments and I'll see you online.